Hello, and welcome to episode 64 of Design Curious Podcast. I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. Today on the podcast, I have guest Anna Popoff of Interiors by Popoff, Seattle-based interior design firm. And she is just a wealth of knowledge as well as someone I greatly admire because As this one quote on her website, actually under her bio says, whatever it is for Anna, it has to be different. It is as if she has a different pair of eyes. She's able to see the unique side of things and to reveal it to everybody else. And I think that is a very accurate quote about her, that she always has a great perspective. She's not easily influenced by the crowd or by trends or anything like that. She sees the function, as we talk about in the interview, of the design as being the primary focus. And she also has a great ability to analyze and look at things within my own group of designers that she and I are a part of through Business of Design. We are a group of ladies, like a mastermind and a board of directors for each other. So we help each other with our businesses, and she's able to really pinpoint and look at each one of our businesses and call us out on the things that we might have passed over or brushed over. And she's definitely looking at that with a very unique perspective. So she's just a treasure to know. I think you'll like knowing her as well, and you'll want to follow her on Instagram, Interiors by Popoff, and on our website. So go check her out. I will tell you a little bit more about her before the interview. But first, let me remind you that I have a really fun quiz for you to take about what type of interior design you should be doing. There's four answers. It's a really quick quiz. So go and take it. The link is in the show notes and let me know what your answer is. Okay, let me tell you a bit more about Anna. Anna is Founder and creative force behind Interiors by Popoff is a true original. Having resided and worked in some of the most diverse and design-centric global cities, she is guided by quintessential European practices of design and craftsmanship to create spaces that are beautiful, functional, and tailored to precise needs of her clients' lifestyles. Recognized as one of the leading designers in Seattle by Architectural Digest, Anna brings her extraordinary visual vocabulary, point of view, and technical savoir-faire to her work. She is passionate about sharing her deep knowledge and rarefied aesthetic to craft transformational spatial experiences. Prior to founding Interiors by Popoff in 2016, Anna led numerous high-profile, high-rise institutional and commercial projects for a prominent casework manufacturer and worked as a lead designer for a bespoke artisanal collective in Toronto. Through the experience of being immersed in every element of the process from concept to completion, Anna has gained a holistic understanding of design, a skill that has proven essential to the success of her practice. Anna Popoff received a degree in business and marketing from the Academic College of Tel Aviv and a subsequent degree in interior architecture and building systems from RCC Institute of Technology in Toronto. All right, now let's talk with Anna. You're now listening to Design Curious, a place where you, creative one, are here to learn about what it really is like to be an interior designer. And I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. If you're worried about how to succeed in a creative career, if you're ready to learn your next steps to become an interior designer, and if you want the satisfaction of doing something you love every day, you are in the right place. Grab a coffee, a notebook, and let's dig into today's episode. Hi, Anna. Thank you for coming on Design Curious Podcast today. Sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, I know you well because we've been in the same group together of other designers that are like a mastermind or a board of directors. We hold each other accountable. And I love seeing your business over the last several years just grow. But I love also your story of how you've gotten to where you're at in Seattle right now. So if you want to tell our audience kind of just how you got into interior design, what sparked your interest in the first place? Yes, it wasn't like a straightforward path. I went to school in, at the time I was living in Israel and I went to 
business school actually in Israel and I finished my degree in Israel in business and okay. worked uh, a little bit in the business role. But during the university and uh, a little bit after is when I started to be kind of more acutely aware of the physical surrounding and the effect, how the physical environment has a profound effect on a person and a well-being mm -hmm. of person of, of the person. And that kind of sparked my interest. And it's been a while when I was processing it, looking at it, I was not into design at all or any creative type of occupation, if you will. Yeah. And then there was one particular moment that I always remember where I was visiting a store, a shop, and it was a little bit more of a refined kind of artisanal boutique. And I picked up a mug and that mug just fit my hands so perfectly. And I'm like, oh my God, somebody designed that. Mm. everything is designed around us yes. and that profound difference between a everything and that one well-designed thing how that makes you feel how that makes you experience the world around you in a completely new different way mm -hmm. I really remember that feeling vividly and slowly but surely is that what took me into that path of well I am really interested in that and what would I do with that and I started researching and interior design kind of hit the spot because on the other hand I've been very very interested in technical details mm. I really like knowing how things are put together, how things come together. Mm. And I think design industry will kind of ended up being a perfect combination of three factors, actually. The technical portion, the creative outlet, and the crazy, fast-paced decision-making <laughs> that I really like as well. Okay. So a combination of three factors kind of came to this one thing. And I went to school for interior design. Actually, at that point, we moved from Israel to Toronto. And I immediately, as we got to Toronto, I went into the design school and I finished my design studies. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you talk on your website about how important function is. And I really think I see that in your designs and in your portfolio that, that you really focus on the function of a space first and how it, the environment impacts them in their daily life. Yes, absolutely. I think that in a creative field, I truly try to differentiate between art, which is something that is visual, that is designed or produced to bring pleasure to somebody and creative field that is functional, that no matter how pretty that portion is going to be, if it's not comfortable, if it's not functional, it completely nullifies the pretty part of that thing that's yeah. been designed that because its creativity is lost. Yeah. So that's why I believe that the field that we are in the function comes first and foremost. Mm. And we have a very unique way and a different way of looking at the design process. And uh, I always find it really fascinating how when we go through it, the beauty and the concept and the uh, creative part starts slipping through some of our decision making. Mm. I can talk a little bit more about it if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do tell us. I love hearing your process. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually approach the design process. We concentrate mostly on residential uh, mm -hmm. design and we look at the home, at the house, as a structure, as a support system. Mm -hmm. So if the house is unoccupied, if that structure is un unoccupied, it has no purpose. The main purpose of that structure is to support its occupant. Mm -hmm. So we treat that structure as a support system. Kind of use almost like an engineer type approach mm. to design a support system. So we need to know what are the needs of the occupants, who are the occupants, what do they do, how do they live their lives, mm -hmm. and what do they like. And based on that, 
that support system has to account everything that happens in within those walls. And the support system is supposed to support that occupant or those occupants, including kids, including dogs, including pets, everything that happens within those walls, that support system has to support, whether it's early in the morning, during the day, deep at night, it doesn't matter when. So that's how we approach function. And that's how we start our design. And when we start developing that support system, at that point, the concept and the beauty and some of the aesthetic decisions start to follow. Mm. So we always start from a technical part and then the aesthetics. And I find that's much more organic process because Mm. the aesthetics then, it's not forced. Mm -hmm. It's rather seeps through and falls into the right folds of the design. And that's how all of our projects being designed. And that's how I train my staff to design. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of in a nutshell, our process. Yeah. When you have a new client, how do you extract all of this information from them? Are they filling out a form? Are you having a lot of conversations or is it more of a visual discovery? Yes. So we have a set of uh, information. We have a cheat sheet. We have a set of information that we need to get from the client. And we usually try to get it organically. We do ask the clients to create a mood board or pin board of some sort. And we always say that do not put a picture in there without having any comments. Mm -hmm. So we ask them to really think about the images that are going into that board. I always tell them that please do not try to look for a room that looks exactly like your room or a house that looks exactly (laughs) like your house. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a living room and it's twice the ceiling height or has much more, many more windows. It doesn't matter. You are going to look at the, uh, see a picture that you really like and you'd say, oh, but it's not going to work with my house. So I'm just going to forego it. I'm saying it's our job how to make your room feel like that but I want you to choose those images that you really like and explain to me what is it that you like about Mm -hmm. it so we we get those pins images with explanations and kind of notes about what people like I do find it's very important to get our clients to mention what is it they do not like if they come across an Mm -hmm. image that they really do not like we Mm -hmm. want to hear about that as well Yeah, we have an during our intake appointment, which is after signing the contract, we would schedule an intake appointment. And that's one part of the intake appointment is a client's interview. Mm -hmm. And this is when we would sit down and we would discuss their habits, their days, their uh, requirements, their needs. We would take a look at, we'll walk through it if through their existing house or if Mm -hmm. it's a renovation, the house that we will be working on, we would pretty much get, I'm telling them that we would get very intimate. (laughs) We would walk into the, (laughs) we would look at their closet. Uh, We would see how many long dresses we would have to accommodate. Mm -hmm. We would take very detailed inventory of what's in the kitchen, all the gadgets, all the pots and pans. Because when we design, like for example, when we plan a kitchen, we actually have a, in our construction drawing set, we have a, a a storage diagram where each cabinet is labeled and indicated and we know we pre-plan what is going to be stored in each drawer in each cabinet Mm, really good that's very thorough Mm. I like that approach a lot so stepping back just a little bit to when you got your degree in Toronto and I know that you had your degree also in business did you go into business for yourself right away or were you working for someone else for a little while No, I was working actually for a long time in the industry and I've been uh, uh, working in residential sector. I've been working in uh, commercial sector, in industrial and throughout my career um, was kind of growing into stepping up and up into different roles. And that was such a valuable experience. I feel like I 
was exposed to so many different aspects of this business and not just an interior design business, but also construction and mm. installation and execution. And I think it's due to my genuine interest in the those three things that I talked about yeah. in the beginning is the creative part is a technical thing. I want to understand how things are going to come together. I want to know that what I designed can be built and what is the best way to build it. Mm -hmm. And also I want to be involved in the actual execution, the stress and the decision making on the fly that I strive in that environment. So throughout my career, I was very, very lucky that I was able to touch on all those points. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I, my choices were intentional to make sure that I have wide exposure in the industry and mm -hmm. concentrate on those three aspects that mm -hmm. are at most to interest to me. Mm -hmm. Great. So then at some point you moved to Seattle how long have you had your own firm? Yes, I've moved to Seattle 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I decided when I moved, I had two options. The last job that I held in Toronto was an executive position in a large company. And I had two options at that point. Either work, go in and uh, work for a company, like find a job in a corporate environment again, uh, which was very tempting. The you know, a paycheck, <laughs> a large paycheck, <laughs> Betty, every yeah. two weeks never hurts. <laughs> sure. Or start my own business. I actually decided that I'm going to take at least six months to a year off. My career in Toronto was crazy. I worked a lot. Mm -hmm. I sometimes worked 14, 18 hours a day, wow. weeks upon weeks upon weeks. Uh, for 12 years, it's it's very intense. <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah, so I decided that I'm going to take a little bit of a break. And during that break, I was trying to decide what I'm going to do, sure. whether I'm going to go back to corporate or I'm going to have my own business. When I was thinking about it, I one thought came to my mind, and that was when I retire, when I'm like 75, <laughs> and I look back, <laughs> and I look back, would I be sorry if I wouldn't try my own business? Mm. And that question, I was kind of lingering in my mind for a little while. And I decided that I probably will be sorry that I did not give it a try. Mm -hmm. And I said that probably if you have a decision that you know you're going to be sorry about before, <laughs> <laughs> you'd better make a decision that will not make you sorry after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> So uh, at that point, I decided that I'm going to open my own business. And I said, if it's going to be work, that's great. If it's not going to work, I always can find a job outside. So mm -hmm. I decided to give it a solid try. Yeah. And you've been quite successful. You had a project in Architectural Digest. Is that right? Uh, there was one uh, that was featured in Architectural Digest. Especially last year, we've been actually featured in a lot of outlets. We've been featured in Architectural Digest Online as well, mm -hmm. uh, in Portrait Magazine, in Seattle Magazine, and we've had quite a bit of coverage. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember. I need to. I need now <laughs> to open my website for a cheat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great! And how big is your team right now? We are six people. Right this very moment, six plus a temporary. We have one member on maternity leave and mm -hmm. we have a member who, a temporary member who is covering for her. Yeah. Okay, great. And I'm sure that you are, you know, mindful of like how you were working in corporate before and how it really ran you down. So I'm sure that the way that you structure for your team, that you are mindful of everybody's mental health and like keep them to regular hours and not overwork them too. Yes, I try. In general, the atmosphere in the office is very important to me. Mm -hmm. I try to hire best talent out there. I think we are very flexible in our 
design form structure. Mm -hmm. You know, family comes first, kids yeah. come first. When yeah. I was getting my first uh, job out there in a large company, I, the owner, I had a three-year-old at that point. The owner, thank like, Blanks asked me, like, you're married, you have a kid. But well, if the kid is sick, what are you going to do? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Wow. So in my company, you have a kid, kid comes first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If your child is sick, you shouldn't be prioritizing your job. You should be prioritizing your child. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, it's really healthy yes. approach. <laughs> yes, I, I tell my girls that, you know what, we don't answer him. Else. We don't do business after five o'clock. We start mm -hmm. working at nine, we finish at five. Mm -hmm. And I don't want any communication going out of the office outside of those hours. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Maybe it's selfish. Maybe it's not them. Maybe I'm okay. I, I, I worry about myself. <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling, but I, I, no, I, I think it's very, very important, especially in a creative field. No one wants an exhausted designer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really a good point to make because you really need rest in order to be your most creative self and paying attention to all the details. Cause there's so many details in our line of work that you can't Absolutely. do that on exhaustion. You need to have that rest. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what, if we are exhausted all the time and the clients are paying our premium rate and yes, we are expensive. How good is it for the client? Right. It really is not fair to the client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're paying for a luxury experience. <laughs> you can't yeah. show up half yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah. When I'm exhausted, I don't have patience. Mm -hmm. I miss stuff. I, I, I'm snappy. I'm not very pleasant to be about around. So who yeah. wants that? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good advice for anybody uh, in any field, but definitely for up-and-coming designers. Is there anything else that you would tell someone looking to get into the career that you wish you had known maybe when you were starting out? I would say that it is very, very important in this particular field to stick with these standards and the caliber of work that you set forth for yourself. Mm. I think that you should really, really strive to get the best possible outcome, the best possible design, the best possible process, the best possible execution that you can. I think in our industry, we are so intimate with clients. It's mm -hmm. so close to people's experience that, in my opinion, a concept of, okay, this is good enough should be a punishable offense. In our <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. You don't want to phone it in for your client. <laughs> No. no, or no. cookie cutter approach, anything. No, no. If you are in a custom design, you have to hold that level. You have to hold that mark mm -hmm. and you need to be accountable to yourself to make sure that everything that you do, you look at it and you're proud of what you've done. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. And also having a community of designers like we do, who can hold you accountable too, and be like, <laughs> you know, looking at what you do and tell you if you're maybe not giving your best. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. We do that all the time. We just, we just had our meeting in Boston and yeah. there was a lot of that. <laughs> there was. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Anna. I love hearing your story and just going to keep an eye on your firm because I feel like it's going places. It's just, you've been yeah. winning so many awards locally and just, I'm sure nationally. And so, <laughs> so we'll keep yes, an eye we've on been, you. Yeah. We've been very lucky. We've been very lucky. And there is one more that we won, which I can't yet talk about. Ooh, it's not okay. yet public. So okay, there's going we'll to be one more announcement <laughs> coming okay. up soon. <laughs> Great. So you probably will post that on Instagram, right? So yes. it's interiors by Popoff, right? <laughs> we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then your, your website as well. So everybody can go find you and hear the announcement one year award. That's so wonderful. Yes. Well, thank you, Anna. And it's a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Have a wonderful day. You too.
such a great time with Anna. I always enjoy the time I spend with her and the insight she has on design, on business, and on life in general. So go check her out. The links are in the show notes. So that's all for this week. Stick around next week. I'll have another great episode for you on Design Curious. Don't forget to leave me a rating and review, or you can contact me on Instagram at rwarddesign. Send me a direct message on any topic that you'd love for me to discuss on the podcast. Until next time, stay creative. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode, please leave a rating and a review. This helps me reach other curious creatives like you. If you have a topic request or would like to contact me, simply head over to my website, rwarddesign.com or email me at podcast at rwarddesign.com.